This is the Unstoppable Amazon Academy Podcast, where we bring you the business advice, skills, and e-commerce news you need to grow a profitable, sustainable business. This is another episode of the Unstoppable Amazon Academy show where we teach you how to build sustainable and profitable businesses in e-commerce, especially on Amazon. And today we're going to be talking about anybody who's been selling for a long period of time has been asked the question, how do I start my Amazon business? So for experienced sellers, this is just going to be a reminder of some of the foundation. And I encourage you to listen with an open mind. Maybe there's something in here that would be of value to you. But also, if you have friends, you have family that have been asking you, how how do I start a business like this? This is an episode that you can refer them to so that you can keep working on your business. When people ask me, you know, I want to sell on Amazon, can you show me? The first thing I do is, you know, I send them to the best from the nest forward slash start free. And I tell them to get their first one to two shipments of used books. And the reason that we recommend you start with used books is because we want you to learn the Amazon system and we want you to be able to experience Amazon and using fulfillment by Amazon, which is how you would make your items available prime without a lot of big expense. It's not fancy. It's not cool. It's not sexy, but it works and it works consistently. Now, books are not nearly as profitable as they were you know, maybe five years ago with some of the new fees, but they are still a great place to start your business. And for many people, they're a great place to continue growing their business. So as we look at sellers, we kind of break them up into milestones. And we have five milestones that we've kind of split things up so we can see what are the actions that you need to take in order to move your business to the next level. And this episode is really going to be focused on milestones one and two. And on our success path, those are really the getting started and the growth phase. And we're going to kind of combine those together for this episode and talk about what is it take to get your first thousand dollars in sales now of course you're going to have to open your amazon account send some items into amazon and you're going to need to reprice them but then you're going to have to continue to send in inventory to amazon on a regular basis and by doing that it's going to allow you to have additional sales we recommend that you don't do private label or if you're going to do something like online arbitrage or retail arbitrage where you're buying things at stores that you think we can sell for more and selling them on Amazon, we recommend that even if you're doing that, that you buy really wide and really shallow. You don't buy too much of any one item because Amazon is this upside down place. It's kind of like when Alice fell through that hole and everything was upside down and things seemed familiar, but not quite right. So selling on Amazon can feel a lot like that. So we want to make sure that you're prepared in order to really do that. So the first couple things that you need to know, I'm going to break this down into five pieces that you really need to know as you're starting on Amazon. First is Amazon is not get rich quick. And now I know that there's a lot of people selling it like it is. You know, you just do Amazon and all your dreams will come true. Now, you know, that sounds hypocritical for me because, you know, I did Amazon and most of my dreams have come true. I have this amazing life that I never thought I would have. And I have an amazing business. Me and my husband both work full time in this business. And I've been doing this for seven years full time. So it has been really awesome. The thing that a lot of people that sell courses kind of gloss over is it's a lot of work. Some days I work really, really hard. In the beginning, we worked so hard. We were working 12, 14 hour days because we were working our regular jobs and then we were doing this on the side. It's physical work. Packing the boxes can be hard. And even if you move into a model like wholesale or private label where people will be like, oh, you don't have to touch the boxes. It's so easy. Well, yeah, maybe the packing part is easy. They've they've figured out a way to shortcut that. But there's going to be either a lot more data that you're going to have to go through, a lot more steps that you're going to have to move through. It's going to take longer for you to get that first result so that you can be sure that you're you're not crazy and this is going to work. And then the other thing is, is it can be... When you have something like like private label, when somebody says they want to come, they come to me and they say, I'd like you to coach me. I'm going to start with private label and I'm different because that's usually the beginning of the end of that conversation because we don't teach people to start with wholesale or private label unless they have extensive business experience marketing physical products already or they have a product that they've built themselves, that they have an audience that goes with it. Or finally, if they have already been selling online for a significant period of time and they understand how online marketing works. 
But in general, we recommend that, you know, if you haven't owned a business before, you do just a touch. You don't have to do it forever, but do something like use books or retail arbitrage, something that you can start today and that you can start to see some sales within the first two to three weeks. In my opinion, it's incredibly important that you get some scores on that scoreboard. You get some points up there right away. And books are the fastest way for you to make sure that you have proof of concept so that you can see, okay, I send the items in, I can see how I can pick items and they will sell. It's going to give you a lot more motivation to keep moving. So I highly recommend, you know, that you remember that it's going to take a lot of work. It's not going to be easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. So, you know, if you're planning on doing Amazon one hour a week and you're hoping to make $10,000, you're not going to get the advice that you want on this podcast because I don't think that that is possible. You really need to invest I would say at least two hours a day. Some of you who are shift workers, if you want to spend two eight-hour days, then that would work. But it's going to take some serious time in order to have a substantial business that brings in more than four or $500. Now, some of you, four or $500 would change everything. And I remember that's where we were. I remember sitting on our bed, talking with my husband and being like, man, if we could just bring home $500 a month, that would completely change our entire lives because we were so broke. We were so stretched beyond our tipping point. And that really would have been enough for us. But as we started to grow our business, we realized how much we loved it and how much more opportunity was. So we just kept growing past that point. The second piece is that there is no one method. There isn't one way to do things. So yes, you you know, I don't recommend that people start with private label, but I know some really successful sellers that have started with private label and gone really far. For those of you who are new to the community, private label means you have your own product created either domestically, but more usual is you're going to have something made in China and you're going to market that product here in the U.S. And so it's going to involve importing and safety testing and all of those things. But there is no one way. You can build your business multiple ways on Amazon and have it work. So that means you need to find somebody that has a proven method, something that you've seen that you can see other people have had results and you want to follow them. My recommendation is imitate before you innovate, that you focus on matching up and copying what it is that is already working for certain people in the community. Once you have proven, you're able to duplicate those results, then you can go in and add your twists. What we see happen is people will try to combine different methods from different people who are teaching Amazon all into one thing. And you know, what happens is they don't have enough experience to really know why this step is in this process and this step is in that process. So we recommend that you really focus in on finding somebody that you trust, somebody that aligns with your moral values, with your business values, somebody that's teaching people to head in the direction that you want to go. So if you want a Lambo and to have pictures, you know, on a golf course and look like you're a millionaire, then you should follow somebody who has that lifestyle. If you're more like me and you want to live a comfortable life, you want to be able to travel when you want to and be able to have friends and be able to go to a friend's party in another state just because if you want to just be not scared of, you know, not having enough money, you want that security, you want the freedom of being an entrepreneur, but you don't need all of the fancy trap and you're not willing to step on other people in order to grow your business, then I might be a better model. But there's lots of other really good teachers out there that I would love for people to learn from. So it doesn't just have to be one person. It doesn't have to be just one method. Now, as you're deciding what way do you want to build your business, you want to think about the kind of capital that you have and the kind of experience and relationships that you have. The reason that we recommend use books is not only because it's the fastest learning curve, but it takes up the least amount of capital. Now, sometimes people will say, well, I have $10,000 to start. I don't need to start with used books. You are going to make mistakes as you start your business. You're going to buy some of the wrong inventory, even if you have retail experience. So wouldn't you rather make those mistakes on a 50 cent or $1 book rather than maybe a $40 item that you bought arbitrage or maybe a $400 wholesale order. It allows you to make sure that you take that learning curve quickly and that we're keeping as much money as possible for once you understand the system, you feel confident in your purchases, then you're going to have more capital to spend on quality inventory. Now, arbitrage is a really great model. We pretty much built our business off arbitrage and that was really us going 
to retail stores, stores that were already existing, we really focused on stores that had some sort of emotional tie where you were buying something more than a commodity. And we looked at those items and we would find items that were selling at a much higher price on Amazon. Now, you need to know Amazon's fees because Amazon's fees are really complicated to kind of guess. They're really not possible for you to guess Amazon fees. I've been doing this seven years and I can't guess what the fees are going to be on a particular product. You'd have to measure it. You'd have to weigh it. All of these different things. So we recommend that you use a scanning app that will tell you what's profitable and give you some indicators for how popular that item is. So the ones that we recommend are Profit Bandit if you're looking to get an inexpensive start. Scoutify 2 from Inventory Lab is also a really, really great option. And of course, there's the Amazon Seller app. Now, the Amazon Seller app is not good for used books. So there's kind of a trade off there. Now, if you're doing arbitrage, then you want to make sure that you have at least $500 to start because you want to be able to make sure you're able to buy a bunch of different items and make sure those items sell. I would make sure that even if you have a lot of capital that you space out that capital and that what you do is you make some purchases, you send them in, let them see how they sell, and then you take the things that have sold and you take those profits, you roll them back into your business and add a little bit more. This allows you to learn each wave from your mistakes rather than putting everything all on black that first time. With wholesale and consulting, it can be a really great place to start if you have some experience selling online, but we would only really recommend that as a place to start if you already have wholesale line. So maybe you have a brick and mortar store that you're already selling, that you have relationships with manufacturers that you could leverage, or maybe you came from a sales rep background. You already had some experience and some relationships there. Wholesale is significantly more capital and your items are going to turn a little bit slower. So the cash demands of a wholesale business can be a little bit higher than maybe the used books for sure and arbitrage. So that's something to think about as well. Now, for those of you who are thinking of moving from retail arbitrage, to wholesale. Some of the things to think about is when you're buying retail arbitrage, you're usually going to buy maybe two weeks of supply. When you're looking at wholesale, you're looking at 30 to 60 days worth supply. So what happens is that even though you were working well with your current cash flow, even if all of your wholesale items go well, then the amount of money that you have to spend on inventory after the first couple weeks seems to diminish. It can put you into a cash crunch. And that's why we recommend that as you move from one method to another, other, you do it really slowly. You do it over time and you give yourself a chance to learn from your mistakes. So making one or two purchases, seeing how those sell, making very small purchases, once those have sold through or you've had a chance to see how they would sell through, then making the next wave of purchases. This allows you to learn from each purchase and build on your skills to make better and better decisions. Now, wholesale takes a lot more systems delayed gratification. So if you're moving, wanting to do into either wholesale or private label, then you need to know yourself as somebody who can say, I'm willing to put off today for something tomorrow because you're going to have to put in months of work to start to really see the rewards. If you're an instant gratification person, I really highly, highly recommend that you start with books or arbitrage. Even if you have that delayed gratification, I would still love you to start with used books just so you have the proof of concept. One of the things that we've seen is people start directly into wholesale. They spend the first three or four weeks trying to find a good item to purchase. They find that item to purchase, but since they haven't really proven to themselves that this whole Amazon thing is going to work, they have a really hard time making the actual buy and pulling that trigger. So that's something to consider as well. You know, you want to have enough experience in Amazon that you're sure that spending this $300 isn't going to be the same as throwing it up into a bonfire. You want to know that you're going to be able to get some results consistently. The item number three that we're going to talk about, the thing you need to know about selling on Amazon if you're getting started is Amazon is weird. There's a lot of weird rules and there's a lot of all sorts of weird things about selling on Amazon. And the things that sell on Amazon are often upside down from the things that sell well in retail stores. You know, if you want a spatula, you'll just go to Target or the grocery store and you'll buy a spatula. But if you need an electric pressure cooker with the steel basin instead of the Teflon basin, even in a big city like Phoenix where I live, I don't know of a store where I could just walk in and get that. So that's when I turn to online purchases. 
So if you had a regular brick and mortar store and you wanted to carry Cheerios and cornflakes, and those would be the main cereals you'd want to carry, on an online store, you're going to buy less inventory, but you're going to carry the weirder flavors. So you're going to carry chocolate pomegranate and peaches and oats and all of those weird flavors. On the Amazon, you have to think about when you're selling on the platform Amazon, you have one really important, really fickle customer, and that customer is Amazon. And the reason I say that is because if you really think about it, Amazon tells us that the people who buy from us are not our customers. So if they're not our customers, who is? If Amazon is our customer, then what we want to think about is how can we best serve our customer? Amazon has Spalding Basketballs and the Lego Classic series and all of the main commoditized items, all of the spatulas, they have those taken care of. They don't need our help on that. They need help on the fringe items. So what we look for is items that maybe don't have as much demand as the number one selling toy, but they do have enough demand to generate consistent sales. But because Amazon is all about supply and demand, when you're thinking about what will sell for more on Amazon, you want to think about what is hard to find. All of the pricing is based off of supply and demand. So what items is there enough demand but not quite enough supply so that I can charge a premium for this item. And that's kind of the sweet spot. So we focus on items that are more niche, that are a little bit more on the fringes. So instead of carrying a Mickey Mouse costume, if we were gonna carry a costume, maybe we would carry a Stitch costume, which is a little monster in Lilo and Stitch. Characters that are smaller, items that are more towards a specific kind of hobby, or something that's a little bit more, you know, subsect of people. Amazon is not Google and it's not retail. So if you're coming from one of those backgrounds and expecting it to be like that, even if you're expecting it to be like traditional e-commerce website sales, it's going to be different. So I recommend that you come in with a humble attitude and it can be an amazing marketplace to sell your items on. It has provided us with an entire living and a life we could never have imagined before. But it does take a while to learn and it will be incredibly frustrating. I remember my first shipment, I wanted to literally pick up my computer and throw it through the glass window because I was just so frustrated I couldn't even breathe or see straight anymore. And you know, there's still days where I get incredibly frustrated with Amazon. And that's kind of part of selling on Amazon. And we have to kind of embrace those things and that are not perfect about the platform because it provides us with so many great opportunities that are wonderful. The other thing, number four, is that we don't recommend that you start with coaching. Now, that seems kind of counterintuitive for somebody who does offer coaching. Why would I tell you not to start with coaching? To get through your Amazon business, you're going to need to be a self-starter. You're going to have to be tenacious. So if you can't get through those first couple shipments of books, this is going to be a tough battle for you. Now, if you need a little help just with the tech part, and you know that once you got it, you'd be okay, then there are a couple people that can kind of handhold you through that process. But as much as possible, I would say, you know, try to get started a little bit on your own. There's so much free information out there. Here's the real problem with starting out with an expensive coaching package. If you start out with, you know, $5,000 package, I've seen coaching packages that are $35,000, which is completely ridiculous for somebody starting out. I mean, that's insane. That's insane money for a couple of phone calls, unless they're providing you something really, really special. And most of those really high-end coaching programs, they've actually turned out to be really bad. So what we've noticed with these coaching programs is people will sign up. They're really excited. They spend all this money on coaching, and now they don't have very much money to buy inventory. Selling on Amazon is an inventory-based business. You have to have inventory in order to make this business work. So if you spend the bulk of your startup money on coaching, you are now going to have to really be fighting all the way uphill in order to get your business started. And when we talk to advanced sellers even, we try to constantly remind them every expense that you add means you have to sell that many more items in order to break even. There are some things that are completely worth the investment because they're going to give you a good return. They're going to shorten your learning curve. They're going to help make you faster and more efficient. Those things are great to spend your money on, but you want to make sure that you are going to be able to get a good return. So if you start with a $5,000 coaching package, you're going to have to sell a lot of products in order to hit your break-even point. When you're first starting out on your business, you're going to have a lot of self-doubt. 
I think that if you want to drag back up anything from your past, any unearthed things that you haven't dealt with from your therapy or whatever, start a business because it brings up every thing that is under the surface for you. And so there's going to be a lot of temptation to give up. And if you haven't even given yourself the chance to prove that this is going to work, then you're starting yourself out at as a disadvantage because it's going to be really hard to stay motivated. And it's going to take you a really long time to be profitable, especially if you have a spouse that's already not quite so sure about this crazy idea. So start with the used books. It's a low investment and it's easier for you to kind of get an idea. Is this really what you want to do before you spend a lot of money on investing in a process that you're still kind of trying to figure out if you'd be good at it, if you would like it? Selling on Amazon isn't for everybody. It takes time, but there are so many different types of people who have done really, really well on this platform. If you're looking to get started and you'd like to start for free, you can go to best from the nest forward slash start free and In there, there's a free course on how to get started with Amazon using used books. You know, if you find a video that doesn't explain things correctly, or you know, maybe like the the interface has changed and you get stuck, email me, we'll update the videos. But we wanna make sure that you're able to start for as little upfront cost as possible, just like we did. We didn't have $5,000 to spend on coaching. There was no way we could have done that. So we wanna make sure that everybody has access to start with a small amount of money so that they can build that business that they ultimately want to. The last thing, number five, is to really keep your eye on the prize. What I mean by that is you want to be focused in on trying to get your first thousand dollars in sales. It's easy to kind of shoot for the moon and be like, well, if I could get ten thousand dollars in sales, it's easy to get really caught up theorizing and analyzing and reading, you will learn so much more by playing on the court, getting out there and doing things. So focus on getting your first thousand dollars in gross sales in the shortest period of time. After that, then you start to work on trying to develop your business. But at least then you'll know the mechanics of what are the revenue producing activities. What are the things that I can do that are going to generate inventory to sales to money coming into my account? And what are the things, the expenses that I need and the expenses that I can cut so that my business can be as profitable as possible? As you're growing your business, it is easy to think that, you know, one day, someday, it'll all be easy. You're going to be figuring this out for as long as you're doing it. So know that there's no amount of learning that you'll finally be like, oh, well, now I feel like now for sure, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. And that one of the pitfalls is to keep learning and keep reading and keep watching Facebook and not actually doing it. If you want to learn on how to sell on Amazon, then you need to actually go sell on Amazon. And you're going to make some mistakes, and that's okay. You're going to make some bad inventory buys. But if you start with used books, you don't have to worry about accidentally buying a counterfeit item for the most part. You don't have to worry about Amazon's rules about shipping glass and kids' items need to be in a poly bag and all of these things that you will learn over time. So those are my recommendations for if you're looking to start an Amazon business. And, you know, if you have somebody later that wants to sell on Amazon, we hope that you refer them back to this podcast. You want to try to focus on getting those first thousand dollars in gross sales. And it doesn't have to all be on Amazon. Maybe you sell some things on OfferUp or Craigslist or even Facebook Marketplace to help build the inventory that you need to buy more inventory for your Amazon business. In those first two stages, we recommend that you send at least 100 used books into Amazon, that you reprice them once they get there, and that you start to think about what are your buying criteria? How much return on on each purchase do you want to get? How much inventory are you going to buy? And then you want to start tracking how much you send in every week and have a goal of how much you want to send in every week. And then as you get that first thousand dollars in sales, if you haven't already, it's time to open up that business bank account and to have your funds, keep them separate, your business funds separate from your personal funds. Right now, this might just seem like a hobby business, but if it takes off, it can be very expensive to untangle if you've been commingling your personal and business funds. So even if you just open up another bank account under your name and use that card only for business, it's going to make things a lot easier on your accountant and it's going to save you a lot of money in accounting fees or bookkeeping fees down the road. I hope that's been helpful. This has been an episode of the Unstoppable Amazon Academy Show where we help you build a profitable and sustainable business. Have a prosperous week. 
Are you looking to grow your business? Join our unstoppable Amazon Academy with hundreds of video and step-by-step -step tutorials to walk you through the skills you need to take your business to the next level. Find out more at bestfromthenest.com forward slash academy. Use the promo code podcast to get a 14-day trial.